Uh, Luke Kilpatrick is Developer Programs Manager at Atlassian. He's the guy behind all these uh, Atlassian handheld text editors that you might have uh, seen around. And, and today he's going to explain how you basically get uh, from an idea for an Atlassian Connect add-on and actually get it deployed. Uh, so Luke Kilpatrick. OK. Let's, uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I always like applause before I speak. That uh, makes it makes it easier. So, everybody, I was, uh, hope everybody's summit's going well. Uh, so we're going to do with even though I have the bright shining lights here, uh, you know I'm going to get a little audience participation here because we all know how much everybody likes that. So, first up, uh, who's using add-ons? Okay, good. Next question: uh, Who's actually written one or who's created an add-on? Okay, great. And um, Who's using their add-ons with on-demand? Okay, we got a couple of people that have worked with Connect. Okay, great. So, last couple sessions have been about add-ons and how to, you know, what to use them for and where to do it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about what are your options to get them built, and then actually how to deploy them and actually get them into solving your problems. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about an add-on that uh, you may be familiar with. It's called Who's, Who's Looking. Uh, it's a very popular add-on. It's been installed in over a thousand instances of Jira, and uh, it currently serves roughly around 25,000 users. Uh, so it's very, very popular. And it basically just tells you one thing: it tells you who's looking at your Jira ticket or a Jira issue. And you know, it was uh, presented a lot at Atlas Camp by Robin Fr uh, Fernandez. And there's a lot more depth available in that presentation. But I just want to show as an example: we've used this as an add-on to show the different ways that we've, uh, we've developed with it. So, Who's Looking was uh, developed a couple times. We've uh, built it with Java Play. And this is the version that's currently in the marketplace. It's running on Heroku. And it's serving about, it costs about 100 bucks a month only to, uh, to run it. So it's a fairly inexpensive add-on to uh, keep running on the servers. But being built on Java, you know, it's not a whole lot different than the P2 system that we've been working with for, you know, years and years. So we wanted to tr try and redevelop it using a different technology that, uh, just to prove it to ourselves if it was viable or not. So we've actually re redeveloped Who's Looking as a static Connect add-on as well using Firebase. And it makes this a lot simpler. If you're deploying as a Java app, it's a whole stack of uh, dependencies and things you have to, to put on your server. As a static app, you just basically throw it as a JavaScript file on a CDN, and it's up and launched. So it's a very easy way to do it. And these are this is available on Bitbucket, full source codes ready to play with. So if you're looking to build a, uh, an add-on for Connect, I highly recommend you uh, go check those out. Uh, I'll have the links at the end of the presentation. So since building an add-on, you need to figure out um, what what you're looking to build, and a lot of times we've, we've tried to help this process along. And we've developed a couple toolkits. And they've been called toolkits, they've been called frameworks. Um, I'm not quite sure what the proper nomenclature, I like calling them toolkits because they're toolkits for frameworks. And what they do is they're extra helpers to help you with some of the complicated bits about getting a Connect add-on built. Uh, you know, they handle things like registration and it helps uh, simplify the uh, authentication. You know, currently we've been doing it with uh, uh, the Express, uh, Ace, as we call it, Ace, uh, Elastian Connect for Express, and the uh, Elastian Connect Play frameworks. And Travis, if you were, uh, caught the last session, uh, he was talking about the new um, .NET framework, uh, the uh, AC.NET, the, or the new uh, toolkit for that. So if you're building with these three, we've already got you some stuff up to the races. Uh, to help you get off to, off to the races quickly. So, okay, what if you're not a Node developer? Or say Java keeps you up at night, or you know, you really haven't liked a Microsoft product since Bob. Anybody remember Bob? Hey, we got a few Bob, Bob fans back in the room. Uh, Google it, it's, it's a fantastic product. And <laughs> can you still build an add-on? Well, yes, you can. Uh, the whole idea with Connect is to, you know, let you build Using any, tech, using any technology that, dis, that will support REST APIs, webhooks, um, 
and let you, let you choose the technology that you're actually working, used to working with. So, uh, you know, it handles anything that can use REST API, the REST API and webhooks, you're ready to go. And there's a lot of documentation at uh, the new developers.atlassian.com, which is, this is a lovely screenshot. Really encourage you to check out the resources tab. There's a lot of, uh, lot of good stuff up under there to help you build your projects. If you are looking to build it, build a project, you know, say on the Spring Framework, or say if you're looking to build it on Ruby, uh, check out uh, Patrick Stuhl, Struhl's talk uh, from Atlas Camp called Building, Connect, Building a Connect Add-on with Your Own Stack. It's, uh, it's a really good thing about how to get started um, using a technology you're familiar with. This is one of, the main, one of the main selling points of Connect is that you can use a technology stack that you're familiar with rather than having to learn Java. So, okay, so we've chosen our technology stack, chosen, you know, you've kind of sketched out an idea of what your add-on's going to do. And you need to make another decision of whether you can go dynamic or static. So, if your add-on is very simple, if it's just displaying information back to the user, you might want to consider making it a static add-on add -on rather than a dynamic add-on. This is a client, with the static add-on, it's a little bit more restrictive, you have to deal it's primarily held on the client side, primarily written in JavaScript, HTML5, CSS3, and, but it's much simpler to host. You just throw it with the CDN and it works. With, with a dynamic add-on, this is where you get into the heavy lifting. This is where you get full access to webhooks, you get full access to, the, to all the REST APIs, but with the dynamic app, you're going to have to take into consideration the performance and how to scale. If your add-on all of a sudden becomes the most popular add-on in the marketplace, you know, you've got 40,000 potential customers all of a sudden with, you know, untold number of users. So, well, you don't have that much in on-demand, but there's, there's a large percentage of, uh, of people that could be doing it. And if you've not considered uh, multi-tenancy and scaling, um, it's just extra things you need to, to uh, be concerned with with a dynamic app. So. Now, okay, so that's the meat and potatoes. We've been, I'm sure we've been rehashing this over, is the options for building. So now you've actually got the thing built. You know, we're gonna use our Who's Looking app here. And how do we get this into your on-demand instance? How do you deploy it? How do you get people using it? So the way to do that is Marketplace. Now, Marketplace is our, is basically the glue between your Connect add-on and the on-demand uh, Atlassian On Demand, either Jira Cloud or Confluence Cloud. So the way to do that is you have to have a descriptor file. This descriptor file, this Atlassian-connect.json file, is the is that is the file that uh, that describes and outlines what your application does and lets Marketplace know how to deal with it. So, and you're going to need to use Marketplace even if you're using this for internal use because it's how we uh, have uh, On Demand talk to your add-on. So once you've done that, usually you're gonna deploy, you're first gonna deploy it as a private marketplace listing. This is where you're gonna be developing. It's also where you're going to be using it for an internal use. Say you're building an integration between uh, another system that's proprietary that's only your company's using. That's never gonna be a public add-on, but you're still gonna need to register it in marketplace so that your Confluence or your Jira can talk to it. So once you've, you know, and then after, if you want to go public with it, you know, you make it into, you flip the switch, and it's ready to go in Marketplace. You need to do a few more steps to this, and we'll, we'll cover that in just a few moments. So, to get your add-on in Marketplace, it's pretty simple. We just take, we go to marketplace.atlassian.com, we log in with our Atlassian ID, and we select Manage Listings, and that brings up this lovely screen here. And you'll notice here, I don't have a vendor account. And then this is a little bit of a step here. You have to fill out a form, and we require two things, a name and an email address. If, if this form's too complex, well, we, we, we're trying to make it better, but uh, right now we just require a name and email address. Fill it out, and we have a vendor account. See, there we go, there's my vendor account. And what we do then is we load in the descriptor file. This works here, yes. And we just paste in our URL to our add-on descriptor. We hit done. And this reads, actually, our, 
our descriptor file and tells us it's free and it's uh, private and it's all ready to go. So um, there's a few more forms after this to get it listed in Marketplace. They're real easy. You simply fill them out and you're ready to go. So that's, that's it. Your add-on's now in Marketplace ready, ready for use. Next step is simply we're going to install our add-on. Um, and to install your add-on, you go into your Marketplace listing. Now for private use, this is, this is how to install for private use. Public use, you just go to your, the, uh, the add-on manager within uh, Jira or Confluence. But for this, we need to do it here. And we basically are going to create a token. Make a new token here. And this gives us a link. And we simply copy the link into our Jira instance here. We go to Manage Add-ons, upload a new add-on. We paste in that URL. Wait a few moments, and there we go. That's it. It's really that simple to get your plugin installed in your on-demand instance once it's listed in Marketplace. It's a cut and paste job. So we've d tried to make this as, as simple as possible, and uh, it's, it's a good way to get your, your uh, add-on in for, t for testing. So that's it, that fairly, fairly straightforward process. So you know, what if you wanna go public? Say you've got your add-on and it's something that you wanna market to the 40,000 plus Atlassians out there. You wanna make sure that they know about it. Or you know, you've built an internal add-on and it's really helpful, it really makes your Jira instance rock, but you know, you're working with management, they don't wanna become a software sales company. You want to release it for free because you think other people are going to be able to take advantage of it. Uh, going public is, really, is, is the way to do that. So to go public, you're going to need to do a few more things. So main thing you're going to need with public is going public is some marketing and some documentation. You know, you want to have some nice screenshots because we want people to know what your app looks like or your add-on looks like when it's in use. You want to have a great logo. Logos are important. This is how people find it. It's how you get your uh, your logo on top of the big screen of add-ons at keynotes and things like that. So good logo is important. And you want to have documentation and support built for your add-ons. So these are, these are things that are very important, just letting people know where they can get help with if, their add -on, if your add-on's not working correctly for, you, for them, or documentation of to help them uh, work within the first place. Once you've got all that bundle up, you know, you basically uh, submit them all into Marketplace. You just fill out a few forms and you submit it for approval. And then we take a look at it with uh, and Reviews It, and we give you some feedback if there's any problems. If not, we turn it live, and you're basically, it's, it's now available in Marketplace. And if it's a paid add-on, it's now available for purchase. So it's, it's fairly, fairly straightforward. So it's really that simple to, to deploy an add-on. Um, I'm running way ahead of time here but uh, I figure you guys want to get to the Jira keynote and get the best seats anyway. And we're going to, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to get this up and running. Um, I really encourage you to check out developer.atlassian.com and the Atlas, Atlas Camp presentations from June 2014. Uh, there's some really great information in those presentations if you're looking to develop a Connect add-on um, and how to, and what's possible with it in the future. So, you know, um, so, so I'm also going to, you know, if you want to take a picture of this, I'm also going to tweet these links out at uh, elkilpatrick.com right after this so that you can have nice, easy clickable. Uh, and I'm always happy to hear more uh, about what cool add-ons are coming out and what more things, what things you're interested in seeing. And you can reach me at elkilpatrick at atlassian.com or you can follow me on Twitter at, at elkilpatrick. So. Thank you, everybody. And any questions? I guess yeah, we have, we, the, we have the, a couple of questions that we can throw the uh, questions up. Um, so when Atlassian Connect comes to uh, uh, Jira and Confluence server, will it still need to connect to the marketplace? Do you want to take that? I can take that. If you, you can want. take that. Uh, so basically, uh, the answer is yes. The marketplace we use we proxy everything through the marketplace to handle versioning. So anytime you deploy an update to your 
uh, connect add-on, uh, the we can make sure that everybody's listening to the marketplace and gets the latest version. And if, say, you make a change to your Connect add-on where you request a new permission, like you want to be able to uh, write data, not just read data, or you want to be able to delete data, we need to uh, let a JIRA Confluence administrator grant your add-on that permission. So everything still needs to go through the marketplace. So we have a place to centrally manage uh, those versioning and that permission scheme. Uh, we go to the next one. And will a Connect oh. add-on work on an on-premise server? Sadly, at this moment, no. Uh, this is coming in the future. Uh, so I th that was the only two questions we had.